It is immensely important for people to understand the magnitude of what Israel is doing. And the numbers is stagnant, 37,000 people don't give an accurate picture at all, at all. I saw it with my own eyes. Simple math proves that Israel's stated goal is an epic lie. In the early days of Israel's genocide, the death toll climbed steadily day after day, but then it became stagnant, even though the killing did not abate, and if anything, it accelerated. And the reason for that is multifold. First of all, it's the way the numbers were calculated, and then secondly, the capacity to calculate those numbers. The number that's reported by the health ministry, the stagnant number, did not include anyone who did not go through the hospital system. In other words, nobody who was buried by their family. It did not include people who were unidentified, both by name and by civil ID number. So it's a very tiny population, actually, of those who've been killed in Gaza. A lot of people who were under bombardment and could not leave their homes were burying their loved ones wherever they could bury them without going through the hospital systems. As we know, Israel has targeted the healthcare system, putting one hospital after another out of commission. That meant that hundreds of servers were destroyed. Tremendous amount of data, healthcare workers, doctors, hospital administrators, nurses, personnel were being killed. So the capacity to record even that limited amount was severely diminished. So even those early numbers weren't under estimation. The category of direct fire, which is the only category that's being measured, they were not counting people who were dying because of lack of access to medication. So a lot of people with diabetes, cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, cancer, being killed by withholding of medication. It does not include people who are dying from rampant diseases that are spreading through Gaza because of the siege, because of Israel's destruction of sanitation and water treatment and availability of water or post-injury infections. And these hospitals are forced to release them to go into tents without sanitation. And so they're developing catastrophic infections that lead to sepsis, which is resulting in death. So there's a lot of that happening. None of that is being counted. It does not include people who are dying from lack of nutrition and basically starving to death. The most susceptible to this are people who have PKU, people with cystic fibrosis, a lot of babies whose mothers aren't producing milk and there's no formula. They're dying of starvation. It does not include another population that isn't talked about very much, and that's people who are missing. Some of them we know are trapped under the rubble. The other assumption of people who were kidnapped by Israel, so this is documented, that's not a question. There's this population of children on top of everything who are possibly being trafficked, and this isn't being talked about much, and there's a population that's probably having their organs stolen. And this isn't hyperbole. For decades, they harvested Palestinian organs. Israeli doctors actually admitted harvesting Palestinian organs. So this is completely conceivable. So each one of these categories has a certain level of morbidity, even when it's managed. Then you take the population of chronic illnesses. And these numbers, by the way, are reported by the WHO prior to the genocide. The reporting agencies have classified Gaza as catastrophic food insecurity, the category just before full-blown famine. And that has a specific rate of mortality versus full-blown famine. So I took the lower range and that gave me a number. And then I took the mortality rates for other communicable diseases based on the scientific literature. Each one of these populations had a specific value. I took the most conservative values. So what I did was start with the rate of death per day that was reported by the WHO. So the total death toll that we're looking at right now is anywhere between 193,000 plus to 514,000 plus almost a quarter of a million to half a million human beings who have died directly or indirectly from Israel's campaign of extermination. That number is surely higher now. What Israel is doing now should come as no surprise to anybody who has been paying attention because they have been talking about this for decades and it's all there for everybody to see. 
And this is not a response. This is a long-held plan. I think it's important to understand Israel's siege that was imposed in 2006 because Israel's stated goal during that time was basically to accomplish what they've done now when they said they were going to starve us to death. I mean, this is what they wanted to do all along. And they couldn't bear the fact that we ended up being a resourceful population once again. All colonizers always underestimate the agency of indigenous people. So it has everything to do with colonial ambitions to take Gaza, remove her indigenous population, and then to exploit and plunder her treasures, whether it is a massive gas field offshore worth billions if not trillions at this point, and apparently oil fields within Gaza. As much as I describe and, and I try to put what I saw, what I witnessed, what I heard, what I smelled into words, I feel like nothing I write and nothing I say is truly capturing what, what I took in. The pathology should terrify people. 